Hey, everybody. So this is exam number two. I'm just going to kind of walk through the exam, the questions that were on it, and, um, you know, kind of double check my answers, make sure that everything is keyed correctly, and give you a look at the different answer options and what were the correct answers. So the first question reads, which of the number from the options below is the smallest? And so this question was asking about well, significant uh, scientific notation. And so the correct answer was 3.0 times 10 to the negative third, because if you look at that number effectively, you have to move the, the decimal place to the left three times. So that would give you um, 0 0.003, which is smaller than all the others. All right, so next up, don't have to change that one. So that's why I pressed cancel. Next question reads, Considering the metric prefixes, which quantity is the smallest? So this is asking about a number and an amount and, and that prefix. So we've got micrograms, grams, kilograms, grams. Okay, so if you kind of organize them in terms of the largest quantity, kilograms is going to be the largest. It's only one kilogram, but I would start out with that as the largest. Now, after that, what we have is micrograms and grams. Grams are going to be your base unit. So just by kind of process of elimination, we can eliminate, well, we can eliminate seven grams, 750 grams, and kilograms. So we really kind of start out with something that's really small, or, well, really only one option. But then, you know, 12,000 micrograms, oh boy, how much is that? Well, I think that it's really beneficial for everyone to remember that there's a thousand micro anything in one milli. So 1,000 micrograms in one milligram, 1,000 milligrams in one gram. So if this is 12,000 micrograms, that's effectively the same as 12 milligrams, which is less than a gram. So that would actually be 0 0.012 grams. So the correct answer is 12,000 micrograms. Cancel that. Next up is convert the or convert 452 Kelvin to a temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay, so when you're going from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, what you're going to do is subtract 273.15. So I'm going to pull up my calculator, and what I'm going to get is 452 minus 2, no, 452 minus 273. And that's going to be 179. So the correct answer is 179. That's the only answer that really matches. So I'm going to press cancel on that. <clears throat> what is the density of a substance that displaces 9.6 milliliters and has a mass of 28.6 grams? So I'm going to open this question up. 9.6 mils, 28.6 grams. So we're asking about density. So that's going to be your mass, which in this case is 28.6 divided by your volume, which is 9.6. And for that, I get 2.979. So I'm effectively getting 2.98 grams per milliliter, which is the best answer here. I think the most likely answer that folks got that was incorrect, but they did the calculation correct, was basically that 28.6. That's off by a, a factor of 10. So I'm going to press cancel there. Next up is which subatomic particle has a negative charge? Before I even open that, I'd like to refresh myself on my uh, my subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are positive. I always think pro starts with a P, positive starts with a P. Neutrons, neutral in the middle, no charge. And then electrons, well, they're just negatively charged. I don't really have a good mnemonic for remembering that. I'm going to open up my answer options. This one is keyed to electrons being the right answer. And lo and behold, that is the right answer. I went ahead and threw some other options on there. For instance, subatron, metron, megatron, just because they're all kind of decoy answers. But the correct answer is electrons. Next up is isotopes of an atom have identical number of which subatomic particles? We got protons, neutrons, both of those listed, neither of those listed. 
The correct answer is protons. Protons are going to be the number that are consistent between different types of the same thing. If you change the number of protons, then you're talking about a different substance altogether. <laughs> so, next up. Burning gasoline is an example of a chemical change, a physical change, or neither of these. The correct answer is it is a chemical change because that gasoline will break down and you're going to break bonds. That's what's going to be flammable and, and give off energy. When a substance sinks, it is said to be more or less dense than the liquid it is in. Okay, so is it more dense or less dense? If something sinks, so that could be, you know, if you put honey into water or if you put a marble into water, those are both examples of something that sinks. And the reason that it sinks is because it is more dense. So more is the correct answer. Uh, it's more dense than the liquid that it's in. So I'm going to click cancel. Next up, which element is in the P block? So this question, I didn't include the periodic table, but you've got plenty of copies of the periodic table. I scrolled down here and, you know, the, the P block is right here. Remember, we've got the S block, the P block, the D block, and then not even shown is the lanthanides and actinides, and those make up your D block. So just to toggle back and forth, we've got fluorine, that's number nine, so that is in the P block. Now let's make sure that I didn't have any other answers that are also acceptable. Na, that's in the S block, Ca is in the S block, and then Mn, or manganese, that's in the D block. So our correct answer is F. Click cancel there. The formula for caffeine has a formula, or the molecule caffeine has a formula of C8, H10, N4, O2. How many are car carbons are present in the expression 9, and then C8, H10, N4, O2? Well, we've got nine of these, so that means we've got nine times this many carbons, and that would be 72 is the correct answer there. <clears throat> Next up, how many valence electrons? So this is a question that's moving into the, the more recent content. How many valence electrons does B have? Well, B has, well, the answer to this is you look to the row that it's in or the column that it's in. It's in 13, but whenever we talk about valence electrons, we skip over this big block, our transition metals in the middle. And so what we're looking at there, and the correct answer is three. Now, do we have it coded for three? Yes, we do. I'm going to press cancel there. How many total electrons does an S atom have? Okay, so S we need to find. Sulfur S is right here. Sulfur has a positive number. Or it has a total of 16 protons. Now, with that said, if we're talking about our total number of electrons, Sulfur is a neutral atom, so it's going to have 16 protons and 16 electrons. So let's see to make sure 16 is right. So I'm going to go ahead and press cancel there. Because that one is correct. It's 16. What type of compound is made from SR and BR? SR is on the left-hand side. It is a metal. BR is on the right-hand side of the periodic table. That's an example of a non-metal. So when you have a metal and a non-metal and their powers combined, you're making an ionic compound. So let's make sure that that is the answer that's coded. It's an ionic compound. There's a bariatric or molecular, or it cannot be determined. So ionic is the best answer. Now, what is the common ion of Mg? So one way that you can solve this is you can look on the periodic table and see that magnesium is in the second row or second column on the periodic table. Atoms and elements that are in the second column, what they love to do is lose a certain number of electrons. They lose the number of electrons for which the uh, column that they're in. So magnesium loses two. So what that means is it loses those two electrons. And whenever something loses two negatively charged things, 
it then ends up with a positive two charge. So plus two is the correct answer. Next up, what is the name? So what is the best name for K plus? That would be the potassium ion. So the potassium ion is K plus. Okay, and that's the one that's marked in. So I'm gonna go ahead and press cancel because that's the only one I need. What is the proper name for the compound Na2O? Okay, so what's important for you to recognize about this is that this compound has sodium and oxygen. Now, I think that there's a tendency for someone to look at a compound with sodium and oxygen and say, sodium hydroxide. Excuse me, but that's not the case here. This is oxygen. Oxygen likes to form the two minus ion. Sodium likes to form a plus one ion. So you need two of those. Now what's important about ionic compounds is that this is going to be, you don't have to declare any like prefixes or anything like that. This is just going to be sodium oxide. So let's see, make sure that I coded that correct. The correct answer is sodium oxide. The decoy answer was disodium oxide disodium monoxygen, monoxin, monoxygen, sorry about that, and then answer option D, none of these are correct. So sodium oxide is the correct answer. Let's cancel on that. Then, <clears throat> how many electrons are being shared between these two atoms? There's three bonds, so that's six electrons. Let's make sure that's coded correctly. Six is right. Which element is the most electronegative element? That would be fluorine. That was one that I asked you to just kind of keep that in mind. Then, considering the chart shown below, this is a question I got some emails about. Which bond is most polar? You know what? I didn't include a picture of the chart, so it's pretty difficult to answer a question without a chart reference. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to click another answer, and I'm going to say, this gives me regrade options. Choose a regrade option for students who have already taken the quiz. Can Canvas may will regrade all your submissions after you save the quiz. Students' scores may be altered. I'm going to say award points for both. Uh, give everyone full credit for this question. So I'm gonna update that and then I'm gonna click update question. I've got a few more questions here. So that was considered the chart, so that's done. What is the name of this compound, BF3? This is boron trifluoride. Okay, so this is a, molecular compound because both boron and fluorine are non-metals. So boron trifluoride. There's also monoboron trifluoride. The reason this is not correct is because you do not have to use the prefix for the first element. Boron difluoride, your prefix is wrong. There's not two fluorines, there's three, or fluorides, there's three of them. Tetraatomic borofluoride. I just threw some the wacky stuff out there at you. Okay. Now we've got, let's see, like five more questions. What is the name of NaNO2? So for this question, I need you to know that Na is sodium. NO2, that can be picked up from this table. That's nitrite. So that would be sodium nitrite. That is the correct answer. Sodium nitrodiogen, sodium nitrodialotrope. None of these are the correct answers. All of them are kind of attractive and interesting answers, but only sodium nitrite is the correct answer. How many total electrons does S3 minus have? Okay, so to answer this question, you've got to know that sulfur has a total of 16 electrons. Then whenever it has that minus three charge, that means that this is confusing, but an electron is a negative charge. It picked up three additional negative charges, so it has a minus three charge. So the correct answer there was 19. There was a decoy answer of 13 and three, but the correct answer, this one, this question was asking about the total number of electrons. So 19 is the correct answer. How many electrons are around the B of BF3? Okay, so here what we have is boron trifluoride. Now the question is basically asking, when you draw B in boron trifluoride, how many valence electrons? You've got three. Now this is a little bit of a confusing and awkwardly worded question. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select another answer option. 
And I'm going to say, give everyone credit for this question. You know, I don't like to give you an awkward question. Um, so if you're reviewing this one, you know, the, uh, I think that what I should have done in terms of uh, making it more clear was I should have rephrased this question to ask how many single bonds does boron have in BF3? That's what I should have done. At any rate, I've adjusted this so everyone receives credit on this one. I'm going to click update question. Done. Now, next up is, and now we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, seven left. Okay. What geometry does a molecule like CO2 have? Now, carbon dioxide is a molecule that in its center is a carbon, and then it's got two double bonded oxygens. This is a linear molecule. I called upon this one because this was one of the molecules that we looked at a couple of times. Um, in terms of lone pairs of electrons and everything like that. How many lone pairs of electrons are around the C of a CO2 molecule? Now, keep in mind that carbon dioxide essentially looks a little bit like this. Oh, where's my annotate? There it is. Looks like this. C. O2. Okay. Now, do each oxygens, do they have lone pairs of electrons? They they absolutely do. Do you does your carbon have lone pairs of electrons? No, it does not. So the correct answer for this, how many lone pairs of electrons are around the C of a CO2 molecule is zero. Okay. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to click update because I don't need to. How many lone pairs of electrons are typically found around an N when N is satisfying the octet? How many lone pairs of electrons? Now, one thing we talked about with nitrogen-containing compounds, nitrogen does this. It likes to have three bonds and then one lone pair of electrons. So I've got one coded as the right answer. That's correct. Next up is S can exceed the octet. True or false? That is true. We looked at a compound called SF6. Sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. And in that case, sulfur has a total of 12 electrons surrounding it. In a molecule of PCl5, how many lone pairs of electrons are around a chlorine? Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question because I think whenever we're drawing compounds, what we like to do is look at that central atom and go, but this is asking instead about Cl, any one of the chlorines, okay? Now, PCl5 is a total of five single bonds going from phosphorus to our chlorines. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six electrons. So that is three lone pairs of electrons. So our correct answer three is coded there. We don't have any duplicate answers, so that's the only right answer. Now down to two questions left. Which of the following is the correct Lewis dot structure or Lewis dot symbol for O2 minus? We've got a couple of answer options. Two minus. Okay, so oxygen, what we're asking essentially is oxygen brings in a total of six valence electrons. With the two minus, that's two additional electrons. So we've got this picture, this first one with six electrons around it, seven, or sorry, eight, seven, six, four. Okay, so our correct answer is this first one with eight electrons surrounding it. Next, which of the following is the correct Lewis symbol for the molecule CO2? Now, this is one that kind of went to the well again with respect to CO2. I think that our questions earlier about the linearity or the geometry of CO2 you know, that was a good one you could have come back to. Like, you could have looked at this and been like, hmm, this is linear. This right here is a straight line, pretty much. I know I drew a blue line that's not particularly straight, um, but that's a linear molecule. Um, and if you know the sequence of events or the, the rules that need you need to follow for drawing electrons and drawing Lewis structures, you know that it would be... Well, how many electrons do you have? Well, carbon's bringing in four, each oxygen's bringing in six, so that puts us at 16 total electrons. 
draw. And that would be your correct answer. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save so that all of the changes to the grading of the exam are applied. I'm going to stop this video, post this on Canvas so you guys have access to it. This will be really useful for whenever you're studying for the next exam. Remember our next exam is part exam two and then mostly part three, so the stuff that we started um, on the 16th. All right, I hope you have a good one.